Good morning, everyone. We're going to start our devotion at this time. Paul, uh, would you please stand? We're going to do something a little bit different this morning. If you know this song, join me. If you don't, I'll do it all by myself. I guess you didn't know that I could sing. No, I can't sing with the melody that uh, um, the, 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 the singers sing, but I can sing with the purpose and, 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 and with the conviction that the song gives. Okay? When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high, and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of a storm, there's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of the lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart and you never walk alone. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart and you never walk alone. scripture I'll be reading from second Peter chapter 3 starting from the first verse I'll be reading from the New King James Version beloved I now write to you the second time, in both of which I stirred up your mind by way of reminder, that you may be, may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandments of us, the apostles, of which the Lord, the Lord and Savior, knowing this first that scoffers would come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of which of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that, that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire unto the day of judgment and perdition. But, be, but beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day <clears throat> is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. 
that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements with, will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and goodness and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of our Lord because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire and the elements will melt with, with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, we diligent things be diligent and be found by him in peace without spot and blameless and consider that the long suffering of our Lord Je of our Lord is salvation as also the beloved brother Paul according to the wisdom given given to him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and I will encourage you that in, in, in your spare time. Read this 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 chapter, Second Peter chapter three in its entirety. And we will we will get a a, 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 a better understanding of what is going on in the world today. Thank you. Good morning, Saints. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift your name on high. We lift your name on high, Lord, because we love you so much. And Father God, we love you both in spirit and in truth. We thank you this Sunday morning, Father, for your forgiveness. We thank you for just giving us the opportunity to open our eyes for another day. We thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy. We thank you most of all, Lord, for your son, Jesus. We give you praise, Father, because you are God all by yourself. We thank you, Father, for being a healer. We thank you for being a provider. And we say yes to your will. We say yes to your love. We say yes to your peace and your joy. And Father God, we ask you to bless each and every member that's here today. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to bless those who are not able to make it today who are watching online and father god we ask you in the name of jesus to watch over our pastor heavenly father touch him father god watch over him and keep him help him to be the leader heavenly father that he is father god we thank you lord for our music ministry as they sing the songs of zion we thank you for every usher every member of the diaconate board we thank you for our families, Lord. We ask you to bless our children and put a hedge around them each and every day. Father God, we just come to you, Heavenly Father, because there is no us without you. And Father God, we ask you, Lord, to help us to just love one another, to keep one another, to give peace to one another's soul. And Father God, as we move on during the course of this week, we will never forget, Heavenly Father, who's responsible for all the goodness and mercy that comes into our lives. So we thank you. We give you love. We give you joy. We give you peace. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The 34th division of Psalms says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. 
Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Do you have a praise? Do you have a praise in your belly? Has God brought you through anything? As we are in the last quarter of the year, has he delivered you from anything? Has he delivered you from anything? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Hallelujah. Come on, let's just do this old song together. Can we just make this one big choir? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, bless his Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, sing it with me, y'all. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, Jesus. Give him some glory. 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 Y'all sound real good. Glory. Jesus. Blessed Savior. He's worthy to be. Shall we stand? Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is righteous in all of his ways, holy in all of his works. The Lord is near unto all of them that call upon his name, in truth and in mercy. Shall we sing this great hymn of our church, There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus, no, not one, no, not one. None else could heal all of our soul's diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide us till the day is done. There's not a friend 
like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Reverend Myron, won't you come? All right, there's not a friend. Not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all of our souls' diseases. None else could heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. No, not one. Everybody sing, Jesus knows all about our struggles. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide us till the day is done. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No, not no one. No friend like him is so high and holy. No friend like him is so high and holy. No, not one. No, not one. No, not and one. And yet no friend is so meek and, and lowly. yet no friend is so meek and no, not one. No, not Everybody one. Everybody sing out loud. Singing. Jesus knows. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend. There's not a friend like the Lord. No, not one. No, not Was one. ever a gift like the Savior given? Whatever gift like the Savior given. No, not one. No, not one. Will he refuse one. us a home up in heaven? Will he refuse us a home in no, not one. Oh, oh, no, not one. Jesus I'm knows. Singing. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the Lord. Oh, no, not one. No, not one. Keep I'm on singing, singing Jesus. Jesus knows all about our struggle. He will guide till the day is done. Oh, there's not a friend like the Lord. No, not one. Sing it one more time. No, no not Lift up one. your voices. Jesus. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the Lord. No, not one. No, not one. You may be seated. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Shall we pray? God, we're thankful that you sent your son who knows all about our struggles. But we admit, oh God, 
because we're not perfect, there are struggles. But we praise your name in church this morning. We thank you for what you have been to us, how much you've blessed us and bestowed your mercy upon us. So we ask, oh God, that you would allow us to take center and be reminded of your every gift, your loving kindness. Bless the singing, oh God. Bless the fellowship. We ask, oh God, that you would allow us to lift up the names of those who have requested prayer. Continue to bless Reverend Jerome Payne and Melinda Lucas, the family of the LaFontaine family in Atlanta, Georgia. We say a prayer of comfort for Amir Loomis, one of our members, who unfortunately lost her mother this past week. So we ask, oh God, that you would bless the life of Victoria Swain in Detroit, Michigan. Continue to bless Deborah Young and Kwame and, and Q and the loss of, loss of Deaconess Grace Young, the little family, Kay Foster have asked for your prayers, Linda King, bless Tawana Long, Dolores Ross, bless William Miller Jr., oh God, he severely needs your prayers. We ask, oh God, that you would bless Elaine Green, Lisa Guido, Sister Rosalind Baum. Continue to bless and heal Nate Perry, who has been an inspiration to all of us. Charlotte George, Joyce Lucy, Robert Barton, Hector Phillips, Esther McLean, William Whitby James, Barbara James. We ask, oh God, that you would bless Sister Humphrey as she is convalescing even right now. We ask, oh God, that you would bless Jewel Fowler, Barbara Richardson, the Leah Pearl family. See about Barbara Richardson, Bobby and Brenda Flagg, Keith Luke, Sarah Madison and family, Juliet Vineyard, Angela Roper has asked for prayers from her church. Denta Williams, Barbara Richardson, we know that you can if you would just would because we know your will and your light is upon us even right now. So we ask, oh God, that you would lift up our spirits even during this inclement weather. Bless us with the light of your son, our savior, Jesus, who is still even the Christ. Bless this city, bless this nation, and bless this world. Bless what is about to take place individually and corporately in the life of our church. In Jesus' name we ask and pray, amen. There is a name I love to hear. I love not a friend. There's not a friend like the Holy Jesus. No, not one. No, not was one. ever a gift like the Savior given? Whatever gift like the Savior given? No, not one. No, not one. Will he refuse one. us a home up in heaven? Will he refuse us a home in heaven? No, not one. One. Oh, oh, no, not one. Jesus I'm knows. Singing. Jesus knows all about our struggle. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the Lord Jesus. Oh, no, not one. No, not one. Keep I'm on singing, singing Jesus. Jesus knows all about our struggle. He will guide till the day is done. Oh, there's not a friend like the Lord. Jesus, yeah, no, not one. Sing a 
one more time. No, no not Lift up your voices. Jesus. Jesus knows all about our struggle. He will die till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. You may be seated. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Shall we pray? God, we're thankful that you sent your son who knows all about our struggles. But we admit, oh God, because we're not perfect, there are struggles. But we praise your name in church this morning. We thank you for what you have been to us, how much you've blessed us, and bestowed your mercy upon us. So we ask, oh God, that you would allow us to take center and be reminded of your every gift, your loving kindness. Bless the singing, oh God. Bless the fellowship. And we ask, oh God, that you would allow us to lift up the names of those who have requested prayer. Continue to bless Reverend Jerome Payne and Melinda Lucas, the family of the LaFontaine family in Atlanta, Georgia. We say a prayer of comfort for Amir Loomis, one of our members, who unfortunately lost her mother this past week. So we ask, oh God, that you would bless the life of Victoria Swain in Detroit, Michigan. Continue to bless Deborah Young and Kwame and, and Q in the losing of, loss of Deaconess Grace Young, the little family Kay Foster have asked for your prayers. Linda King, bless Tawana Long, Dolores Ross. Bless William Miller Jr., oh God. He severely needs your prayers. We ask, oh God, that you would bless Elaine Green, Lisa Guido, Sister Rosalind Baum. Continue to bless and heal Nate Perry, who has been an inspiration to all of us. Charlotte George, Joyce Lucy, Robert Barton, Hector Phillips, Esther McLean, William Whitby James, Barbara James. We ask, oh God, that you would bless Sister Humphrey as she is convalescing even right now. We ask, oh God, that you would bless Jewel Fowler, Barbara Richardson, the Leah Pearl family. See about Barbara Richardson, Bobby and Brenda Flagg, Keith Luke, Sarah Madison and family, Juliet Vineyard, Angela Roper has asked for prayers from her church, Denta Williams, Barbara Richardson. We know that you can if you would just would because we know your will and your light is upon us even right now. So we ask, oh God, that you would lift up our spirits even during this inclement weather Bless us with the light of your son, our savior, Jesus, who is still even the Christ. Bless this city, bless this nation, and bless this world. Bless what is about to take place individually and corporately in the life of our church. In Jesus' name we ask and pray, amen. There is a name. I love to hear, I love to sing His word. <laughs>
Are you making it today? Amen. Our biblical text for today comes from Paul's epistle to the church at Philippi. The book of Philippians in the New Testament. Philippians chapter 4. I'd like to read in your hearing verses 15 through 19. The book of Philippians, fourth chapter. Beginning with verse 15. Through 19, amen. Somebody's preaching already. Philippians chapter 4, 15 through 19. Now, ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, the church communicated with me as concerning a gift and offering and receiving. No one did it except you. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my needs, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound, I'm full, having received of Epaphroditus, the things which were sent from you, an odor, a sweet fragrance, a sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Verse 19 again, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to preach simply and succinctly from the thought of reclaiming God's supply chain. Reclaiming God's supply chain. Lately and recently, we've been hearing reports about how what is referred to as the supply chain for goods and products has slowed down. Because of this latest pandemic, products that are usually in abundance have become scarce. Because of shutdowns and businesses not being able to keep up with things that we normally can find and purchase have become more difficult to come by. Everything from cars to clothes, from toys to turkeys at Thanksgiving, flat screen TVs on Black Friday, trees at Christmas time will become harder to come by because of the interruption in the consumer supply chain. Sometimes when we think, when we think things are available, and when we think and know things are in great abundance and in great supply, we tend to take those things for granted. But when the time comes that we can't have what we want to have, when we want to have it, we realize how appreciative we should have been when we had those things at our disposal. Have I got a witness? And if there's one thing, my friends, that we should never take for granted is God's grace and God's ever presence in our lives. You know it well enough, my friends, that even when you woke up this morning, you recognize that you wouldn't take this day for granted to the point and to the degree that when you open your eyes, you would either say or pray or think the thought that God gave you this day and you would not take this day for granted. Can I report to you that God made this day? This day is the day that the Lord has made. Somebody ought to rejoice and be glad in this day. Don't take what he does for you in your life for granted. He didn't have to do it for you, but he continues to bless you. 
He didn't have to do it, but he continues to guide you, continues to make new ways out of no ways, continues to bless your spirit and maintain your mind. Help me, somebody. He continues to forgive you when you make bad and wrong decisions in your lives. He continues to give us somewhere to stay and lie down at least for one night. Somebody ought to give God a praise. He continues to create paths of righteousness for his name's sake, continues to be steadfast and protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger and the opposer and the enemies in our lives. He continues to nourish your body and in a commercial sense, there may be an interruption in the supply chain, but I just came by to drop in somebody's spirit that when it comes to God, there's never an interruption in the divine supply chain because what he does, he does it for us and what he does cannot be stopped. God's supply never runs out, never runs dry, no crisis, no health scare, no drop in the economy, no earthquake, no tornado, no hurricane, no natural disaster, no political election, no presentation can deter the supply chain of whatever God wants you to have in your life. God's supply never drives up, never runs out, never is cut short, never stops, never ceases, never takes a holiday. Can I report to you today that God's supply can never be filibustered, can't be stalled, can't stop, won't stop, because my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. You ought to give God a praise. So here in Philippians, Paul is reminding us to note the difference between short-term blessings and long-term blessings. He's not saying that one is better than the other. He's just reminding us that there is a difference between short-term blessings and long-term blessings. When he was preaching in Philippi, he was talking about the importance of giving a financial offering for the sake of the continuing of their ministry together. Some congregants were skeptical of Paul. They, they became critical and, and thought he was nothing than a charlatan, itinerant preacher. They, they had second thoughts and doubts about his ministry. They thought that he was just hungry for money. So right here at verse 17, he says, I desire the gift short term, but at the same time, he desires the fruit that may abound and law and last for the long term. Can I remind somebody here today that God just doesn't bless you one way. God blesses you in the short term, and when you think about it, God will bless you in the long term. There's a difference between the two. Is there anybody here who can think about how God blessed you in the short term? He made a way this morning when the world says there was no way. But in the long term, he'll give you wisdom, he'll give you patience, and he will give you understanding that men cannot fathom or conceive. It's the same today, my friends. A responsible ministry will ask for an offering, not for the preacher to wear expensive clothes, not for the preacher to drive a fancy car, live in an opulent luxury apartment, or own a mansion and a yacht. We're not here for that reason, my friends, but we do have to ask for an offering so that this ministry can continue despite a once-in-a-lifetime health care crisis so that we can continue on despite the fact that we live in a divided country. Have I got a witness? Whatever happens, God's supply will never run out. Whatever happens in this world, we have to be encouraged because we know that God is still at the head and the vanguard of God's church. And because God's supply never stops, that means the church and the ministry of the church should never stop. Aren't you glad that God's supply never shuts down in your life? I need to ask that question again. Aren't you glad that God's supply never runs out in your life? Can I ask it a third time? Aren't you glad today that God's supply has never run out in your life? It, 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 it never shuts down. Just last week, the major social media platforms shut down for a few hours. About four or five hours, Facebook shut down. Instagram took a break. 
WhatsApp went on a holiday. There, there were some people that almost lost their natural minds because they could not get on Facebook. They could not scroll down on Instagram. There was a shutdown, a fade to black, a preemption of grand proportion. That can happen every now and then to Facebook and Instagram. But you've got another reason to praise God today because that can never happen with the God that you serve. There's no such thing as a shutdown in God's supply. You ought to give him praise because God blesses according to his riches and glory. There can be no shutdown because the blessings are according, the key word, according, and because and due to his riches, and because and due to his grace, and because God has everything, his blessings can never stop. Bill Gates became rich because he made Apple computer. They say Mark Zuckerberg became famous because he invented Facebook. But it was God before them who created the silicon chip and placed it in the valley. You are to give God a praise. Henry Ford became wealthy for inventing the first car. They call it the Model T. But it was God who fashioned the iron and the ore to house the engines in that same automobile. Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Kevin Durant have become household names in basketball. But it was God who has cattle on a thousand hills to make the leather and the rubber that bounces that same basketball. You ought to praise his name. I think it was Walt Disney who became a legend in theme parks, who envisioned Disneyland and Disney World. But it was God God who made the land and it was God who made the world and God who made the dirt for those parks to be built upon. You ought to come here and give God a praise because his supply will never run out. Clap your hands if you want. Open your mouth and give God a great big hallelujah because his supply is ever present in your life. When we were little and if a piece of candy fell on the ground, and if we really wanted that piece of candy, we'd just pick it up and blow on it and say, God made dirt and dirt won't hurt. It may not have been the most sanitary thing to do, my friends, but it made for good theology because whatever God makes, God can use to cleanse whatever of ours becomes dirty in our lives tries to stain you. The world tries to soil you. The world will throw dirt in your direction. But because God has everything, it will do you no harm. The Bible says no weapon formed against me will prosper in my life. God made dirt and because God is in everything, it won't hurt. People will try to hurt you. People will try to harm you. But it will never prosper if you don't let it prosper in your life. Co-workers might try to hurt you, but it won't prosper. Colleagues might try to downplay you, but it won't get very far. You might have to go through bad news and hear bad reports. Bad attitudes are designed to take away from you, but God has a supply that will meet your needs according to his riches and glory. You ought to praise God because God is with you even right now. Even the dirt in your life, he'll clean it up, he'll clean you up, and start you on your way. Raise your right hand and thank you, say thank you, Jesus. If you've got dirt in your life, he's cleaned you, he's cleaned you up, he's washed you over, he's made a new way. Praise his name. short term will eventually run out but the long term will last for eternity they told me one of the young fellas that plays ball down the block I won't say his name because I know his father pretty good he said he refuses to be vaccinated and the league said for every game that you miss according to your contract 
you will forfeit $400,000. That's the type of money these young men make running up and down the court and putting the ball in the basket. So that means for one quarter in a game, he makes $100,000. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm not saying he's right. If he really has these beliefs and principles, then he has the right to exercise in what he believes in. But I will say that no matter what decision he makes, money doesn't last for always. Have I got a witness? You can't take it with you. You can't take it up to heaven. Money can last for always. It reminds us that we ought to appreciate the short-term blessings, but at the same time, we've got to value God's long-term blessings. And my clothes are short-term. The shoes on my feet are short-term. Where I live, my apartment, my house is short-term. The car that you drive is short-term. The job that you work on is short-term. But you ought to give God praise today that he's furnished you with long-term blessings that won't just last a lifetime but will last for all of eternity aren't you glad you've got a God that never shuts down because his supply will meet your needs according to his riches in glory it's good to have a God that is the same yesterday today and always we, we learned that on Facebook, that they engage in what they call these algorithms, which are formulas that are meant to teach the computer or the phone based on the history of an individual, where the individual is going. Let me try to explain it to you like this. If you get on your laptop, your tablet, or your cell phone, and if you're in the habit of typing in certain words, the next time you go to that phone, laptop, or tablet, all you've got to do is start typing, and the algorithm will allow the computer to get there before you even get there. What am I trying to say? That with God, we've got a reciprocal algorithm. Because based on my history, God already knows what I'm about to do, and where I'm about to go and it's reciprocated because I know what God did for me in my past I know that God is about to do something big in my life come here and hear about this divine algorithm based on your history God has already got to where you're trying to go praise his name you're on your way there you're not there yet but God knows your destination God knows the final chapter God knows the end of the story even when you don't know how it's gonna turn out praise his name for his final gesture praise his name because he's the same yesterday today and always we also found out that it was Instagram specifically that are causing young men and especially young teenage girls to second guess their physical appearance. We, we, we learned that when young women constantly are preoccupied with Instagram, they see all of these images that are hard to keep up with. But what they may not know, all of the pictures that they see don't really reflect how the person looks in real life because a lot of times when people take pictures on Instagram they doctor up the photos they airbrush the photos they, they tinkle with the photos so by the time you meet them in real life they look one way on Instagram and they look another way in real life there's an old saying is what you see is what you get thank you Geraldine because I've got a God up in heaven based on how I see him is the same way how he is in real life with God what you see is what you get and although I can't see God with my eyes I know that what he has created has allowed me to see his providence working right before me I can't see God with my eyes but I can see 
that he fashioned the vastness of the oceans and the rivers. I can't see God with my eyes, but I can see that despite the rain, he causes the sun to shine somewhere on this earth at this very moment. I can't see God with my eyes, but I can see that he created waves and frequencies that translate, Paul, into melodies, harmonies, scales, chords, and apegios that are a delight to my ears. I can't see God with my eyes, but I can see that he's placed la laughter in the mouth of babes and wisdom in the minds of the aged. I can't see God with my eyes, but I can see through the changing of the seasons that he evolves the sweltering of the summer to the foliage of the fall to the chill of the winter back to the ease of springtime you can't see God with your eyes but you can see what he's done in your life you can't see God with your eyes but you can see that you're clothed your right mind. Aren't you glad you've got this type of God? Aren't you glad that you've got him? You've got him despite your troubles. You've got him despite what worries you. You've got him despite your debt. You've got him despite what makes you anxious. You've got him despite what keeps you up at night. You've got him despite what ails your body. You've got him despite the naysayers, the no good doers, the negative thinkers, the neighborhood stealers. Aren't you glad that you've got this type of God who will supply and meet all of your needs according to his riches up in glory? You've got him today. And if you're glad you've got him, you ought to praise him. Do you have him up in the balcony? Praise his name. How about over here? The family of the baby. Aren't you glad that God gave you the gift of life? How about this crowd right over here? Aren't you glad that you got him despite the world, despite trouble, despite tribulation? You got him and we've got Jesus who died late one Friday night. But because God looked after him, like he's looking after us, he got up that Sunday morning, got back up, and never to go back down again. No matter what happens last week, the week to come, be brave and be courageous. He will meet your needs. He will make a way. He will show up in your life. He will deliver you. He has healed you. Is there anybody here who will reclaim God's supply chain? Praise him. Praise him. Praise him if you please. Praise him in your own way. Praise him in this sanctuary. Praise him the firmament of his power. Let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord. going to open the doors of the church. If there's somebody here who has never given their life to God through Jesus Christ, if you'd like to join a church, a church with people that are going through similar things that you're going through, a church that has people that will pray for you in your times of distress, if we open the doors of this church, is there one person? Man, woman, boy, or girl, the doors of the church are open.
offering. We're going to ask that you would prepare your tithes and your offering to bring for the upkeep of this ministry, that we may be an encouragement to this community, uh, to families, to young people, to our seasoned warriors, to the elderly. And that can only happen if all of us give together. What shall I render? What shall I give? God has everything and everything belongs to him. We thank God for our trustees who are coming and they will be holding the baskets. Uh, Sister Stephanie Meyer, Yolanda Bob, put your hands together for all of our trustees. Thank you so much. Please prepare your tithes and your offering. We try to take this seriously as responsible stewards of what God has already blessed to us in our lives and has bestowed upon us. stand and praise God from whom all blessings flow. Now, eternal God, we know that every good and perfect gift comes from you. So we thank you for what these monies are about to do in the life of our church and the life of individuals who will be blessed upon it. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask our church clerk to come, Sister Marilyn Brown. She's going to introduce us to these families or family that will come with the child that is to be blessed. We also thank Evangelist Valerie Brox for her service to this ministry. Put your hands together for her. Thank you so much, Evangelist. And we're going to ask her to come and say a prayer of blessing over the child. Amen. Good morning, afternoon, Brown. We are blessed with a baby to be dedicated to the Lord. We do not christen or baptize our children. We wait until they are old enough to make that own their decision. Today we have Aaliyah Victoria McCullum. Williams and Dwayne McCollum. Go 
our parents, Natalia Uria and Sydney Thompson. Brown, I introduce to you Aaliyah Victoria McCollum. Let us pray. Father God, come on, come on. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this precious, precious baby. Lord, we dedicate her back to you. Yes, she belongs to her earthly parents. But I thank you and I praise you, Lord, that you will never leave her nor forsake her. Watch over, keep and protect her, God. Keep and protect her, Lord, against all that Satan would try to bring against her in her growing years, in her teen years, in her young adult years. Lord, I thank you that you would grant her parents wisdom in the name of Jesus. No, there's no book to tell us next step, what to do, how to do, but I thank you and I praise you that we have a God who speaks to our spirit. Speak to them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. These God parents, Lord, let them be there in the time of need, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, God, I thank you. Keep her from all molestation. Keep her from all the things that we turn on our television and see on the news. Oh, God, we praise you. Bless her in education, God. Bless her, Lord. Create in her a spirit of love. Create in her a spirit of, of giving. Create in her a spirit of learning. Create in her a spirit, Lord, that will take her to heights, higher heights than the glass ceilings will be before her, God. I thank you and I praise you, Lord. Oh, God, touch her from the top of her head to the sole of her little feet in the name of Jesus. And, oh, God, I praise you and I thank you. Grant her wisdom. Grant her in, in financial blessings. Grant her, Lord, and let her know the gift that you have placed in her before she was even born. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you. We give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Let's put our hands together for this family. Little Aaliyah. She was taking a nap and her eyes opened real quick. And once I gave her back to dad, she went back to sleep. Amen. Amen. She doesn't have anything to worry about. All she's got to do is eat and sleep. But uh, when Aaliyah, you get older, you'll have to pay some bills too. Eh? Let the church say amen for little Aaliyah. Amen. 
So we're glad that you came to church today, this afternoon, and we, we salute and shout out all of those who are looking online, either on Facebook or YouTube. And uh, don't forget about us. Tune in next Sunday at 11 o'clock, God willing, we all will be here. Amen. Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to ask our friend, Reverend Byron, from the Little Mount Zion Baptist Church in Williamsburg to come and dismiss us with the benediction. Shall we stand? First, giving honor to God in my life. I'd like to um, say this publicly to Reverend Miller. On Thursday and Friday, we had services here. And, and my neighborhood churches wouldn't allow us to, to use their churches. And we made one call here, and it was like, okay, it was not, you know. And I just like to thank him. Thank you, because um, he's, he's a great man. I know you got a great pastor. Must Jesus bear this cross alone, and all the world go free. I know there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. It's again your humble servants bow down at the footstool of mercy. We not bow for no shape, form, or fashion. We not bow because man said bow. We bow and say thank you, Jesus, for another day. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to come into your house, Manny Father, and worship, Manny Father. Manny Father, look upon this pastor, Manny Father. Touch him, Manny Father. Hold him up on every lean inside, Manny Father. You know all about him, Manny Father. Did Manny Father touch his congregation, Manny Father? You know all about him, Manny Father. Strengthen him. Hold him up, Manny Father. And then, Manny Father, when traveling days is done, we're going the last mile of the way. We stuck our sword in the stand of time. Instead, he war no more. Manny Father, as we leave this place not your presence, Manny Father, that we may again return on a, another day, Manny Father. All we ask your son Jesus' name. Amen.